Hey everyone, thank you for watching the video and tuning in. I am giving some tips on dealing with anxiety as the title suggests. Just to backtrack a little bit, I mentioned in my last video, which was a little bit over a week ago, that I'm going to be merging some of the old content that I've made on my old channel, uh, which is just Tom Dunphy, which is a series of YouTube videos that kind of goes through the journey of going through a cancer diagnosis and treatment process and what that was like for me um, because at the time I couldn't really find any information on uh, what I was going to go through, how it was going to feel and uh, basically you know the unknown of the future of what was going to happen to me which is why I wanted to create a video on this topic of anxiety because that's where most of our anxiety comes from right is that we don't really know what the future is going to hold. So any type of future thought we have, worrying about things that are going to happen in the future, it just inherently creates this anxiety because it's something that we can't control and we don't know what's going to happen. So I've chucked a link for the very first video that I made on YouTube in regards to my cancer diagnosis. Because obviously I was going through some massive anxiety at that time and it was obviously ebbing and flowing like my anxiety was super high right before I got the diagnosis because I was unwell, I was doing tests and it's a period of time where you're a bit like, I don't really know what's going on. The title of the video is Google was right, I had cancer is because I was going through that really anxious time like Googling all my symptoms and trying to figure out what was going on until I you know, finally got the diagnosis. Then weirdly had this like sense of calm about me for a little period of time um, because then I knew and I knew what I was gonna deal with. And it's just one of those things that comes back to dealing with anxiety as well is about worrying about the future because you don't know what it's gonna feel like, you don't know what's gonna happen, so inherently you just sort of freak out and think, what's gonna happen, what's it gonna feel like, where am I gonna be? Um, and then when it actually happens, you're a bit like, oh, yeah, I'm freaking out, but it's not as hard as what I thought it would be. So yeah, the link's in the description for that video. I'm gonna start throwing my old videos up on a playlist on this channel, and it just will give me some topics to go back and forward about as to why I'm doing these videos and offering these tips, because I obviously went through a massive life event, a massive traumatic event, had to do a lot of personal growth through that process, um, do a lot of things like you know personal development, meditation, uh, hypnotherapy, psychology, like you name it, to try and get myself in a better place now than I ever was before. And, um, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, when events happen like that to people, for some reason, I look back on it now as one of the best things that have happened to me. So if you want, go back and watch that video. Um, I was look calm in that video, but I was very super anxious and I only really made it because I wanted to attach it to a GoFundMe page to raise money for my family uh, because we both sort of worked by ourselves, had our own businesses, um, you know, didn't have a lot of cash. Courtney was also pregnant. We found out she was pregnant about eight weeks before I got diagnosed with cancer. So she was about to go on maternity leave, about to have our son. Neither of us had a real steady sort of income. So I threw up that video thinking like, you know, if I could just raise some money just to get us by for a period of time, which works. Like I think we ended up raising about $25,000 initially and then other people did fundraisers for us, sort of went on from that. Then that actually turned into my channel that I did videos at least once a week or every fortnight right up towards the end of the treatment. I didn't do it right at the end of the treatment because things got pretty hard with a stem cell transplant. And I spent some time in hospital and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's not so much about that journey. I want to talk more about you know some of the tips that I use to try and deal with those massive anxieties. And obviously, you know, it doesn't just have to be a cancer diagnosis. Previous to that, I had some events leading up to the cancer diagnosis that were a bit stressful for me, a bit anxious for different reasons, as well as just having this sort of overarching general anxiety about life, which I think a lot of people do have. And if you don't, I think you're one in a million and you're a super freak and good on you. But, um, you know, just things like social anxiety, um, just anxiety about putting myself out of my comfort zone with my business and all that sort of stuff. So it's just these bunch of general things like general, you know, people worry about their health and all that sort of stuff, which is completely normal. Um, you know, so one of the things that blew my mind, which is a tip I guess I can share with you right at the beginning, I started doing the hypnotherapy is figuring out and this will come up a lot like with people, is that most of the time your anxiety is literally about your anxiety. 
So meaning like there's a layer of anxiety on top about the fact that you have anxiety. So you'll get a natural anxiety, right? The biggest thing to, to realize here is that the natural anxiety, it, it, it's a natural thing. Like you have to affirm yourself when it happens to say, you know, this is normal. It's, it's, a, it's a genetic thing that happens to people. It's our fight and flight mechanism that just protects us. It's our brain protecting us from our outside environment and the unknown, like what's behind that bush, what's coming up behind that hill. So it just sort of, sort of shows you, I guess, things to be concerned about that might be coming up. Um, but I guess a way to deal with that is realizing that you can't push it away. So when the anxiety comes, you can't push it away. So when I say your anxiety is about your anxiety, is most people get it and they go, oh no, I'm anxious, like, what do I do? I'm anxious. I'm, I have anxiety. I don't, you know, anxiety is not good for you. It's not good for your health. You know, your emotional distress causes physical disease, obviously. So it's like about people pushing away their anxiety and they're, they're fighting this never ending battle of like trying to push it away. Like, I don't want this feeling. I don't need this feeling where actually it's just natural. So another tip to realize in that process is just allowing it to be there and being in the present moment. And you have to reflect in that present moment and go, okay, I'm anxious right now. What am I thinking about? What am I worrying about? Get myself in the present moment and be like, am I in danger right at this second? Am I in danger? What's happening right now? Is there something really here for me to worry about? Or am I just coming up for thing with things to worry about that may be in the future, for example? So. That's a really, really big aspect of it is just allowing it to be there. And I've used this analogy before in other videos. It's a bit like if you're in a cabin in the woods and there's a, a big bear sort of scratching at the door and you think if this bear comes in, it's gonna eat me. And you're just thinking about what's happening in the future, even though you don't really know what's gonna happen. The bear just could come in, sniff around and, and walk off. Bear's probably not a great example. Let's just talk about a dog. If people are scared of dogs or whatever, or a wolf, the chances are it's not gonna eat you. It's just gonna come in, sniff around, see what's happening, and then leave again. So knowing that it has, it's normal for it to be there, you need to let it be there, and there's not, really not much you can do about it. So why don't you just deal with the present moment and be like, hey, Take a few deep breaths, let's just chill out. This is a natural process, affirm yourself. Just say, this is normal. It's normal for people to feel this way. It's normal for people to be anxious. It's just my fight or flight mechanism and I just need to deal with this present moment. Another good way to deal with it, another really good tip to deal with it is, no, is thinking about, um, you know, trying to avoid thinking about the future as much as possible. I know it's easier to say than it is to do, but, one of the things you have to realize is that 85% of what people worry about never actually happens or never comes to fruition. So worrying about the future is a silly thing to do. Obviously, it's really good to plan for the future in a positive manner, but worrying about what might happen is just useless thought. And that's why you need to bring yourself back to the present moment again and really sort of deal with what's happening in the present moment, checking yourself, making sure yourself making sure you're safe and not really having to worry about what's in the future. If you are gonna to go to that space, another tip is if you're gonna think about what's happening in the future, if you say you have a big event coming up, you might be waiting on a diagnosis, you might be waiting on a, a you know an outcome of an injury you have, it might be about a meeting, it might be about a breakup, it might be about a relationship, whatever it is. One tip that you can do is bring yourself forward to that moment. Okay, so obviously the anxiety's there, it's gonna be there, it's natural. So let's think about it, am I in danger right now? No, I'm not. If I'm not in danger, what am I thinking about in the future that I think is gonna be so dangerous? Then we start to go over what that thing is in the future and we analyze it in its force. So we go, okay, I'm worrying about um, whether the doctor says I'm going to be able to walk again because I injured my leg. So we run through our head a scenario where we go, okay, I walk into the doctor's office. He says, look, there is damage to your leg. You might have a limp for a few years, but you're gonna be able to walk, you're gonna be able to recover, and you're gonna do a great job of healing, and people live with way worse situations, and you're just gonna to have to adapt to this situation, and that's how you move forward. So you go through that scenario in your head like it's happening. So you, 
what is happening is when you have that future thought, you go there, you have that conversation with yourself, you figure out what it feels like, what it looks like, what it tastes like, what it smells like, and then you go back to the present moment and go, okay, that's how I would deal with it if it would happen. So now I have the tools to deal with it if it happens in the future. But as far as continuing to worry about that thing happening in the future, I'm just gonna stop doing that, I'm gonna check myself in this moment, control what I can control and stop worrying so much about my anxiety and just realize that it's a natural process that everybody undertakes, everybody goes through in, in every aspect of their life. And once you've kind of dealt with that future thought, thinking, okay, now I've done, dealt with that conversation, I'm back in the present moment. If that thing happens to arise when you get to that moment, which 85% of the time it won't, even with me going through the whole cancer treatment, the whole cancer process, there was things I had in my head like, I'm gonna die. Um, I'm gonna feel so terrible, I won't be able to do this. I'm gonna feel so terrible, I won't be able to do that. I'm gonna be a cancer patient for the rest of my life. I'm gonna be weak, I'm gonna be useless. I'm never gonna be able to work properly again. I'm never, a million things just go blah, 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 over in your head and that just happens in so many situations. But now that I've been through it, yeah, there were some pretty shitty times through that process, but nothing was what it felt like. Like nothing is what I made it out in my head to be. And nothing was as bad as what I made it out of my head to be, including the fact that I'm alive right now. So I'm just gonna leave it right there and try and keep it as short and sweet as possible. I'll keep doing this. I'll, I'll upload an old video onto a playlist and I'll sort of go back through the some of the things and feelings and tips and tricks that I use to get through those moments and grow myself personally, uh, you know, through that whole healing journey. Um, and I just hope that I've even left you with some handy tips and tricks on anxiety. I know everybody experiences it. Um, it can be general, it can be like an event that happened, like that, you know, triggers it in you and then it continues to trigger it in you. But this is a process that I follow quite often. Um, thankfully, because of what I've been through and the post-traumatic growth that I've had, I feel much better in myself now as a person. I'm so appreciative and grateful of what I have. So I'm not so worried about what's gonna happen in the future because there's no point. I've been through the worst thing I could possibly imagine. And at the moment, life's pretty good compared to that. And I made it out to be such a worse thing in my head than what it actually was. It was still pretty bad, to be honest. But now that I've worked on it a lot, you know, I did make it in areas a lot worse in my head. So this is how I sort of deal with it. When I have these moments of anxiety come up, I check myself. I go, is my anxiety just about my anxiety right now? Okay, my anxiety is here, let's just let it be here. Check myself in the present moment. Am I okay? Yes, am I in danger? No. Okay, what am I worrying about? This is what I'm worrying about. Let's play that scenario out of my head. This is how it'll go down. This is how I fix it. This is how I deal with it. And then I'll move on with my life. And if I could leave you with one more tip to really help your anxiety, almost mitigate it and abolish it altogether, is just move your body every single day. Doesn't matter how overweight you are, doesn't matter how crippled you are, there's ways you can move your body. You can wheel in a wheelchair, you can swim, you can, you can walk, you can do yoga, whatever it is. Because that general movement of your body is so much better for you than being stagnant and sitting around doing nothing. And then on top of that, um, you know, your brain releases certain chemicals that just make you feel great after you exercise and you just get that time alone to walk and think and exercise and just clear your mind. So that would be my last tip on this one. I'm always going to be an advocate for that like everybody is in the health and wellness space. But these are just my tips relating to that YouTube video. Like I said, the link is in the description. Go have a look if you want. I think it's called uh, Google is right. I have cancer. Check that out in the playlist. I'll upload that. Uh, and thank you again for watching.